expose the player to this pollinated content. And I mean, from uh, the perspective of somebody who's making the content, it's cool to know that eventually somebody's going to stumble across it in their UFO. You know, so um, it's it's really fun on the team whenever like you walk up to someone's computer and you see like, oh holy, you know, oh my gosh, there's something that like you know so and so made over like a what and you know that's just on your planet. Or for example, I make a big scary monster and I go over to somebody else's machine and I find that it's eating their character. It's very satisfying. <laughs> so one of the design kind of questions was, do we organize the content as you go around the galaxy so that you can get a sense of these? This is the cute area of the galaxy or the very vicious area, you know, both in terms of aesthetics and possibly in terms of like kind of the gameplay you encounter. Yeah, we, we do, you know, m much like in um, other games when you upgrade and you uh, go into more dangerous areas as you, as you build out your character, did we need that in space? Did we need one area of the galaxy to feel more dangerous than other areas? Um, or is it just up to you to create that danger and, and do that exploration? Um, colonization was um, obviously a key part of um, the player's experience all through the game. Um, one of the things they're learning is to grow um, their, their tribe, grow their city, and we wanted to um, have them continue with that thought of growing their colony. Um, we initially thought the, the gameplay around colonization would be about finding um, planets that you wanted to live on and that some planets would be cheaper and some planets would be more expensive because you had to terraform. Well, uh, one of the challenges that we discovered was when we had hundreds of thousands of planets, it's really hard to make a pl any given planet feel rare. Like, no one planet feels that unique when you have so many choices. If you go to a planet and it's expensive to, to colonize and you really wanted a colony in this area, there's probably 50 planets within you know, a stone's throw from you that you can go check out and see if those are cheaper. So it was really hard to say, uh, the player is just going to have to want to colonize this exact planet right here. So we wound up um, you know, backing off a little bit from that design, but still trying to find ways to make planets as special as we could. Combat in space wound up being tricky for me because um, I, it, we're dealing with um, a UFO flying around a complete 3D ball, a sphere. <laughs> and that turned out to be um, a combat problem that I didn't initially know how to solve because it was it was really easy for the player to get disoriented. It was um, it, it was a combat model that was um, unfamiliar to a lot of people on the team, and, and um, I had to pull in everybody I think on the team and especially Alex to um, brainstorm how to solve this problem of combat on a sphere. And the cool thing about that is you end up. You a lot of the tricks we're doing in the editor we do in, in gameplay as well, so we're sort of compressing the space down so that when you're, you feel like you're playing in 3D, but actually all of the game is taking place on a plane around you. So even though you're zooming in and out, we're basically making all the missiles explode at the same level you are and all of the other you know, UFOs stay at your level. So even though you feel like you're operating in three dimensions, it's, it's really only two. So. We, we had um, the same sphere problem in the Civ game when um, it, it, the Civ game is the first time that the player really backs up and is able to um, see the whole planet and rotate the whole planet and understand that it is a ball. And it was really um, seasick creating to spin. The, you know, even when you see planet Earth and you see it rotating, it doesn't rotate like this. It rotates on its axis, right? So, but when you're a spaceship and you're flying around, all of a sudden the planet's off its axis because you're in sort of a third person, first person perspective on this um, StarCraft and it, it's losing the axis, it's losing its polarity and it was 